Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are figuring out the most economical way to burn your house down and not collect a dime of insurance money. <laughs> don't, don't do this. This is definitely... <laughs> Goes without saying, don't do this at home. What I'm gonna be doing is using this old toaster here to make a tempering oven. So basically, we're gonna modify it to go above its its typical temperature. Uh, I wanna be able to bring this thing up to about 700 Fahrenheit, somewhere, maybe, maybe 725, somewhere in there. Thinking what we might have to do is put some uh, insulating wool in there so that there's not too much heat transmittance through into the steel body of the oven. So, the elements I'm gonna be using here, obviously we can't use the standard oven controls because one, they're super inconsistent. They're not very accurate. The other issue is they don't go up past 450. So, we need another way to control it, which is where this comes in. Right from China. Mmm, smells like an electronic fire already. So, it's a uh, just a standard PID controller. These are super, super useful little industrial implements here. And this one happens to be uh, set up for a solid state relay. Some of these have a relay built right in, and uh, I prefer the solid state relay. A little more, uh, more safe in my opinion. Although, when these things fail, they typically fail in the closed closed circuit position so you gotta uh, I never let one of these run unmonitored I also used one of these for the PID controlled uh, hot plate that I built some time ago and showed you guys um, and they are great but I would never trust one of these cheap Chinese ones to run unmonitored now I snagged this oven on Facebook marketplace for 10 bucks so if we completely destroy it it's not a big loss first step there's still some crumbs in here and it appears they're pretty well lodged. Ugh. Well, that's... Oh, I should have just bought a new one. This is gnarly already. Now, another big question I have about these, I don't know if they're designed to actually be disassembled. I've never had a toaster oven apart before because generally they're a use and when it breaks you toss it sort of item just like pretty much everything in modern American culture. All my stubbies are out in the garage and I don't... Ooh, that hurt! <laughs> oh, got a good return spring on there when it's gravity assisted. Now I would think with a huge company like Oster they'd be a little more conscious of their bomb numbers but they have every screw under the sun imaginable in this thing. The only thing in common, they're all Phillips heads, but you'd think they'd be a little more consistent. Save that dough. Make manufacturing easier. Alright. And here's your actual controls. So you can see the, what is this, the temperature up here, right? Yeah. Just a nice little bimetallic switch. That's pretty cool. So, now that's pretty slick how they do that. Okay. I know this isn't supposed to be about the oven, but this is kind of cool. So they have, oop. let's see if we can get in here. Nice and deep black. All right, so if I actuate this, you can actually hopefully see that on camera the bimetallic switch, bimetallic relay operating. And the way they're actually registering the heat there, I'm pretty sure is just through this aluminum piece here, conducting heat from the oven. I don't mean to get distracted, but this is a pretty cool little engineering design here. So if I heat it, we should see the relay disconnect. We'll get it right on the edge there. Once it hits the set point. Hey, look at that. How cool. Get it set again. 
that is an ingenious and cheap design. So there's no actual electronics monitoring the temperature on the inside of this oven here. It is purely by this bimetallic switch and just the conduction through this nice little aluminum tab. Which, uh, you know, if they were trying to be super accurate, they'd probably be using copper or something of that nature. Um, but it, it's a toaster oven. You don't need to be all that accurate. So to get the, uh, the burnt grease off this thing, <laughs> I've been using my favorite, the cum gutter, with a little uh, steel pubes. And it does a kick-ass job. Look at that. Boom! Probably not designed with toaster ovens in mind. <laughs> I love this shit. Take a shot of this at night, you won't even wake up the next morning. Just kidding. Don't do that. Well, it is far from perfect, but we got the inside pretty well cleaned out. Went through damn near a whole can of cum gutter and a fair amount of steel wool, but got it cleaned up. Watch, watch the elements burn out the minute I turn this thing on. <laughs> All right, let's. Oh, like a virgin! Look at that! Holy shit! All right, so I got a couple different thermocouples here. I was planning on using uh, Big Beefy here, but I think we'll save that for another project. I want to build a more higher temp, like kiln sort of thing, so I was hoping to use that temperature probe for that project. I'm going to probably use this little nubby guy, the chode. We'll step drill that sucker right in. Got my PID shoved in there, and... What I'm gonna do next is probably install just a couple control switches. One main power on off and then another to control the convection. Thinking about it more, I, I'll probably paint some satanite on here just to give it a little more heat resistance. And the steel should be fine with 700 degrees. With uh, the satanite covering, hopefully it won't transfer too much heat in. I'll also try to wrap it as best as possible in the ceramic fiber blanket I'm going to put on here. I thought these would remove so I could get a nice even, nice surface to drop the blanket over. These suckers are welded on, so there's no, it's just going to make it a little bit more of a bear to put the blanket over there. I might have to chop it into pieces and <laughs> somehow glue them in there with the Satan knife. We'll figure it out. But also, I took a look through my uh, heat sink scrap bin, and I was originally planning on going with this one since it's kind of a nice fit. I figured I could slap it on there, but unfortunately because of the way this is stamped, and also that's a pretty small surface area, I'm thinking this one might even be better. That way I could mount it vertically, it could all poke out the side, out, out of the stamped area, and I'd have better access to the terminals as well. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. That's what I'm going to go Yeah? Okay. That Englished correctly. So we'll mark this out, get a couple screws on here, and mount our SSR, cut a hole in the back, screw it in, and we'll be good there. <laughs> Uh-oh. Son of a bitch, we overheated her. That's what happens when you go too hard at the hole. Oh yeah! <laughs> so that way the uh, heat sink of the solid state relay will be outside of the body. Hopefully it'll, you know, be able to stay a little cooler. I'll put some uh, self tappers through there, have it hold on from the back. Beauty! Alright, let's see if it gets the edge called on the glory hole. Yes! Oh, that one was a little tighter. Alright, that'll be our convection. That'll be our main power switch. And I gotta put the PID back in there. I was cutting all these out so I didn't want shavings to actually get inside the PID and short something out. 
got the SSR in there, mounted nice and beautifully. Heat sink exposed on the outside, that way it, it'll still be hot as shit in here, uh, even with some insulation and whatnot. I'll probably have to put a computer fan to stop stuff from overheating, but at least the solid state relay will be exposed to ambient outside temperature via, well, somewhat ambient outside temperature via this heat sink sticking on through. To further ensure my chances of this catching fire, got some of the cheapest Chinese thermal compound that they make. It's probably just re-bottled anti-seize. Simmer down puppy. I think Linus Tech Tips would be very proud of that uh, grease application. Got myself and the wife a beautiful new blanket. A little itchy, but uh, should be nice. Oh, there we go. The real pain in the ass is I already had one inch ceramic fiber wool, but it just wouldn't fit in here, so had to order a fresh roll of half inch. Hey, that'll at least keep it a little cooler. Look at that, that's beautiful. That's actually not half bad. It's looking pretty good. I think I'll probably be able to sneak the spring and just drill a couple little holes there. Might rub a bit on the housing, but I think that'll work. We have just enough room for everything to reasonably well actuate. It is gonna let a little heat through kind of right at that joint area where this actually articulates, but overall, I think this will work beautifully for quite a while. So now to insulate the back and the bottom, I'm gonna put a piece on the inside. Should be a pretty tight fit. It actually holds up there pretty damn nicely. Look at that. Now my concern is that because the bottom of the elements won't be able to radiate heat as well as they were designed to and it's also going to be operating in a hotter environment than it was designed to. I'm concerned these may burn out. I think that's definitely a possibility given we're going to be pushing these pretty well past their design limit. The good thing is this isn't going to be operated as regularly, at least I imagine not, as a normal toaster oven. So hopefully that'll help the lifespan a little bit. So I got some Satanite, which is a uh, refractory compound typically used to line foundries and forges. Um, I'm kind of using it more as a glue. I want to get the convection area pretty well insulated, so I'm going to kind of paint it on and then stick the wool onto that and kind of seam the edges, hopefully. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit. I won't need much. Now this is actually made from the ground up grundle cheese of Satan himself. Very high temp stuff. Yeah, that seems about perfect. Don't need to go too crazy here. It's not actually lining a foundry or anything. And it's going to be exposed to far lower temperatures than normal. The wool seems to actually stick to it really nicely. So that's a win. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are looking at the rat's nest wiring here. And. I, I ended up using double pole, double throw switches just to have a little kind of extra factor of safety. That also required a little extra on the side of wiring things. So it's, I was trying to video it and kind of explain how I was wiring up what. It's just, it was too much of a pain in the ass to really explain. So top switch is the main, oh, I'll stop explaining. I'll just do a wiring diagram and try to show you guys what's going on in here because it just too much crap to explain. But top switch is main power, that powers on the PID, and also gives power to the solid state relay, or gives the hot to the solid state near relay, which can switch it on and off. Now I'm still gonna have to run an auto tune on the PID. All right, power coming in. Hit the mains. All right, PID turned on. Yeah, she's heating up. And the convection works too. There we go. 
<laughs> oh, sweet. All right, guys, so as you can see right now, I got this thing running its uh, auto-tune, which uh, seems to be sounding the alarm on itself, so <laughs> hopefully it's figuring out those uh, PID numbers a little better. Obviously, you have the PID actually stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Controller, and uh, basically it's trying to find the values for each of the proportion, the integral, and the derivative that best suit this given environment. So... I guess it's going to run some uh, some kind of fuckery and figure out what the best values actually are for it. But unfortunately it is way too hot outside to actually test this thing to 700. Obviously I don't want to do it inside the house and burn my freaking house down if something goes wrong. Uh, so it's also almost 100 degrees outside today so that's not happening. So we'll have to wait till the next video using this sucker to see if it hits the 700. I got a, a couple projects planned for it. I want to try the thermal decomposition of potassium chlorate into potassium chloride and perchlorate. Seems to work good. We'll, uh, we'll be testing the 700 soon enough. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, like, subscribe. If you're able to, please consider donating on Patreon. These, uh, all these parts are freaking expensive. <laughs> from the wire to the the wool to the PID controller um, also my apologies to everyone for not getting a video up sooner uh, this whole virus thing is uh, my whole family got sick I've just been in, in a bit of a funk and uh, had had a couple videos that just didn't work out so I apologize for the gap in videos but I don't want to just toss trash out there and hope you guys enjoy I, I want to keep a good standard of video so uh Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, uh, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe. That way you get notified when I post. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.